I'm not a transphobic. I'm not homophobic. I'm not Islamophobic. I got, I'm no phobic, okay? But some of this stuff, you kind of got to be like, is this normal? <laughs> is this real life? So here's our friend Dylan Mulvaney um, highlighting his trip to a nice little hotel room. And our friend from The Blaze basically asking, does Dylan Mulvaney need psychiatric, psychiatric help? Let's play that clip. Volume. I'm a city child. Oh my God. I live at the Plaza Hotel, which is huge and wonderful and trace elegant, especially at Christmas time. Okay, we need to talk about the mental health crisis that is clearly infecting the LGBTQ plus community. If Dylan were an actual woman in his mid 20s that was obsessed with girlhood and being a little girl, people would rightfully be concerned. But for some reason, because he's a biological male doing these questionable things, it's stunning and brave somehow you know what if the people around dylan his so-called friends and family if they actually cared about him they would be getting him psychiatric help because that's what he needs he does not need to be trotted about as some show pony on social media and he certainly doesn't belong speaking with the president and being interviewed with the likes of drew barrymore what we are doing is we are glamorizing mental illness the boy the boy needs help he does not need more surgeries i love that we are glamorizing mental illness yep the boy needs help, not more surgeries. You guys let me know in the comment section. Yeah. If you, you think the kid needs help, go ahead, Nat. So if you look at I actually did some research, and there there's uh, reasons why people detransition. And if you look, the highest reason why people detransition de is because they realize they have gender dysphoria and is related to other issues. Oh. And one of the other is health concerns. That's the second highest. Tr transition did not help with my dysphoria is the third. Found alternatives to deal with my dysphoria is the next one. Uh, unhappy with social changes, changes in political views, dysphoria, and so on and so forth. If you pull that chart up, you can see. So like, there's more to it than just changing your inside, like your outsides. Like people think like, yeah. oh, you change your outside, you're gonna feel so much better because you look better and you feel better. But there's so much internal damage that it also does to you. And it's very scary because people who are doing it at such a young age, you know, they, as you grow, you make changes, you become a different person, and sometimes the person that you are on the outside is not the same person you will be on the outside in a few years. Mm. So when you make those permanent changes at such a young age, it's very frightening because now you have to go in reverse. And even when you reverse, there's some things in life that when, once you make a decision, you can, once, and you can't go back. There's no going back. And if you go back, it's not going to be the same. It's any of those like type of surgeries you do, no matter what you do once you start, if you want mm -hmm. it to go back, you want to take it away, it just doesn't. And I actually have another one, but we don't have to put that one up. There's also, it shows you the ages that most of this transitioning is being done. And that's between age 13 to 25. And those are prime years that you are so uncertain about yourself. So it's like to make those permanent changes and financial changes, it's very expensive to do it as well. Let's not forget, this is Soscat's money. It's very expensive. Oh, damn, How much does this cost? It's expensive for you to go cut your tatas and your titi off. Like, I mean, there's if there's ever a time <laughs> to save that money, <laughs> it might now. be before you cut your dick off. <laughs> Please. I'm going to go out on a limb here, bing, <laughs> yes. bing, and just say... I don't know. Save so that money. Save that money. Save, save that dick. <laughs> As Pat calls the dangalang. <laughs> so it, interesting because it, it's we talk about the transitioning, trans, yes. uh, transgender transitioning. Yes. But this is detransitioning. Yes, you want to go back. I made a mistake. I want to yeah. change. This is not who I am. This is not what I feel on the outside yeah. anymore. And you see all the the reasons why people do it, and it's it's sad because I was thinking about this last night as well. Because I see these people and it's like, I respect, you know, respect, I have no disrespect. You do your thing from afar, that's fine. But if you think about it, like these people, they're unhappy with themselves, you know? Imagine that, uh, that much of unhappiness you feel you have to make these ex external, extreme changes. And even at the end of that, you know in your heart, this is not like what I was born as. This is not who I really am. Yeah. And I think that's where people 
put that word in delusion where you have to like put in your head like this is who I am, this is who I am. And I, I feel kind of bad for some of those individuals because you can see like that discomfort with some of them. I'm not saying all of them. Some of them are very confident, do your thing. But there's some that you can see that like, you know, I'm, I'm uncomfortable, you know, I don't feel like myself, but it's like you're making changes and you're unsure while you're making it. So it, it's, it's sad. It's, it's sad. Interesting, yeah. It, talking about detransitioning, transitioning, detransitioning. Yeah. You know, they say uh, once you go black, can't go back. I know girls like that. They ain't going back. Adam, I think it's a little different. Of course. Different. But I got an update for you. Once your dick gets hacked. <laughs> there it is. You ain't, going, you ain't no going back. I don't know. That was a good one. That was I think one. I just got canceled by all types of people right there. But that's the benefit of <laughs> working back tame. I wouldn't cancel me. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. That yeah. was Shout that out was to good. my uh, friends out there that appreciated that joke. And if I offended you, you know. Okay, this wasn't the episode Just for toughen you. up. I already told you this at the beginning. Trigger warning <laughs> beep, at beep, the beginning beep, of this episode. Beep. So I was traveling recently, and uh, before I was able to book my flight, they asked me to pull up my gender, okay? Mm. And I made this video to basically highlight how absurd things have gotten. I was like, listen, I'm just trying. I'm a dude. I'm a man. This is what's going on. Yeah. All right. Joey, see if you can play that video right there of how confusing it was and which one I needed to pick. All right, here it is. Oh, no. Play the music. No music. Wow. I can't even pronounce some of those. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know which one to pick. <laughs> no, poor guy. <laughs> so see if you can put the volume up actually a little bit. Legend has it. He's just <laughs> still trying to figure it out. <laughs> So I just went with other. Other. <laughs> Kill that volume, Joe. I just went with other. I didn't know which one to pick right there. It was so, so confusing. Uh, you know, certain people may say uh, that there's only two genders, you know, there a man are. and woman. I don't know. Nat says this. There Apparently are these days, only two genders. You know, there are only two genders. Here's what I do know. I'm just going to use an ice cream metaphor right here. You know, uh, there used to be only two flavors. You only get chocolate or vanilla. Take your pick. Now, you go on a fucking trip. It's motherfucking Baskin Robbins out there. You got 31 flavors of genders out here. What are you? A cis, gen, pan, this, other, I don't know, non-binary. I Hungry. It's like, the, <laughs> sounds like a rocky road out there. <laughs> Ooh, I like okay? that. <laughs> I don't know. Some cookie dough. But um, I know we're joking, but this is a serious topic. And let's yeah. get a little serious for a second right here. Um, and... Again, I'm highlighting as many different types of voices as possible. Women, men, gay people, trans people, everybody's weighing in on this topic because again, it's not just about my opinion, it's what people in the community are saying. Here's actually uh, a former trans influencer who's basically blaming TikTok stars mm. for the rise in gender ideology. He's saying that is a trend that destroys lives former trans influencer and detransition activist you just talk about not transitioning detransitioning yeah. his name is Ali London mm. he blames TikTok and its transgender stars for the rise in gender ideology scroll down a little bit Joe that's a picture of Ali wow. let's see if we can play the clip put it at one and a half speed and let's see we're going to just pick and choose the uh the moment that i don't know exactly i don't have time stamps for you mm -hmm. but just start from the beginning you're on TikTok. you now see thousands and thousands of transgender non-binary influencers getting millions of followers getting millions of views um because it really has become a trend but this is not just any trend it's not a trend when you become a goth for the day or you start a dance trend this is a trend that destroys lives it destroys families it destroys the lives of children it teaches children that the only way to feel happy and to accept themselves is to mutilate their bodies through surgery, through taking very harmful hormones. We have to look at the correlation as well um, between um, when TikTok came about 2018, suddenly that was when we really started to experience the rise in medical transitions of kids. Cool. It was rising before that. But so mm. again, this is someone who transitioned and yeah. then detransitioned. You know who? You know who knows a lot about that? Someone that did it. Oh, good to know. Okay, we're just weighing in, you know, as like normal dude, yeah. normal chick, 
kind of giving our opinions as just some normal people out there just getting through life trying to get paid late and do it our way but this guy knows what's going on and he said listen this is a trend that is ruining lives and he, he basically said this ain't just some trend this ain't the tide pod challenge yeah where some idiots decided to eat a tide pod no okay this ain't the water bucket als challenge where you dump cold waters buddy this is where you're transitioning your entire body taking all sorts of hormones, slicing, dicing, and everything nice and cutting up your body. Wow. And it's ruining lives. And I think this is something that, that, that should be highlighted and pinpointed. The rise of all this type of activity since TikTok came to America. Yep. I've been a vocal advocate about this, especially on PBD Podcast. Yep. Uh, TikTok, owned by ByteDance, which is owned in part by China and the Communist Party of China, uh, the CCP, they don't want America thriving. They don't want America winning. They want our youth destroying each other internally, yep. literally and metaphysically. So if you like that clip, click right here to watch another, or if you wanna watch the entire SauceCast, click right here.